Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of Mission Impact with me, Tracy D. Allen. Today, we're going to be talking about which type of um, social enterprise should you choose? Because before you jump into the social enterprise um, industry or realm or whatever you want to call it, you need to know which one is best for what you are trying to achieve. So wanting to help the community is great, but there are different ways in which we can help the community. You have to make sure that you're choosing the right model and the right entity. So we're gonna go through an exercise that you can follow along with to come up with the answers that you need to determine which social enterprise is best for you. My name is Tracy V. Allen. Again, I am the owner of TVA Consulting Group, where we help social enterprises, social entrepreneurs, and small businesses to design, build, and fund their social ventures, maximizing their revenue and creating impact in their communities. So let's get started. So I'm going to go through some questions and I'm just going to be like a question. And then if you answer yes, then this is the answer that you should. This is the one that you should go with. If you answer no, then this is the one that you should go with. So the first question you want to ask yourself is, does your do you want to have investors or do you want to get grants and donations? If your answer is no, I don't want to have investors then a nonprofit organization may be the um, right entity for you. If your answer is yes, that you want to have investors, then the next question you should ask yourself is, does your entity um, have a public charity function or does it have a private offering or service, right? So does it have a public um, charity function or does it have a private offering or service? And if you say yes to this question, then you may want to consider something like a hybrid. So a hybrid is a mix between a nonprofit organization and a for-profit company. So the nonprofit organization can have a subsidiary um, for-profit company where that company is able to do things that are not restricted by the IRS, make as much money as it needs, and feed that money to the nonprofit organization right? The nonprofit never feeds anything. Everything feeds the nonprofit, right? Or you can have a for-profit company with a nonprofit subsidiary, which works in the same manner where the for-profit feeds the nonprofit and the nonprofit carries out the charitable causes while the for-profit is able to, again, make unrestricted monies. All right. So that's what you would do. If you say yes to that question, then you, you should have a hybrid um, organization. If you say no, and if I'm looking on the side, it's because I'm deferring to my notes. So if you say no to that question, then do investors want the entity to be required by law um, to pursue goals other than the profit maximization? So do you want the... Um, do you want the organization to be able to pursue goals outside of just um, rather than just uh, maximizing its maximizing maximizing its profits? If you answer no to this, right? If your answer is no, um, then you are going to ask yourself this question: Do investors limit? their potential liability to the amount they invest. So is the investor's liability limited by the amount of money that they invest into your company? Now, if you answer um, no to this question, we're gonna just go with the no's, right? So if we answered no to this question, then your next question to yourself will be, um, will this entity have more than one owner, okay? Now, if you answer no, this entity will not have more than one owner, then a sole proprietorship is what you wanna go into. If you answer yes, that this entity will have more than one owner, then a um, partnership is where you will be headed, okay? Now we go back to the same question. Does the investor want to limit their potential liability to the amount that they invested in the organization. If you answer yes to this question, then the next question you're going to ask yourself is does the investor want to pass through taxes 
for this entity. Now, this is going to be a yes and a no. So we're going to go with the no first, right? And I am going to have a um, infographic that I will link in the bottom to this, right? So if the um, in the, if your answer to this question is no, then a corporation is where you are going to be headed or a limited liability company, either a corporation or a limited liability company. If your answer to this is yes, then a limited liability, and I'll just recap the question again, do investors want to pass through taxation for this entity? If the answer is yes, a limited liability company, which is an LLC or an S Corp is where you're going to be headed. So if the answer is no, it's a corporation or a limited liability company. If the answer is yes, it's a limited liability company or an S Corp. Now we're going to go back up to one of the previous questions that I asked because I went down the whole no list for that question. Now we're going to go over to if you said yes to that question. So the question again is, do investors want the entity to be required by law to, um, to pursue goals other than profit maximization? So do you want to do other things outside of just profit maximization? If you answer yes to this question, do investors want pass through taxation of this entity, right? That's the next question you're gonna ask yourself. If you said yes to that first question, your next question is, does the um, investors want pass through taxation of this entity? If your answer is yes, then a low profit limited liability company is what you would wanna choose and that is an L3C. And just a sidebar, I'm going to do another video on the different types of entity and um, what the benefits, the pros and cons are. So all like the limited liability, the LLC, the L3C, the corporations, I'm gonna talk about them in another video. So, and I know a lot of people have never heard of an L3C. So if you answer yes, a L3C, a limited a limit, a low profit limited liability company is what you would want to create. And that's it, right? Now, if you answered no to the question, and I'll repeat the question, do investors want pass through taxation for this entity? If your answer to that question is no, then the next question you want to ask yourself is, is the entity located in California? Because that makes a difference, right? So if the entity is located in California and your answer is yes, then your next question is going to be um, for the investors, does the goals or um, other, do, the, do investors have goals other than profit maximization, right? So do investors have goals for the company else that are beyond profit maximization? Like, do they want to do some other things with the company, you know, besides just maximizing their profits? If your answer is yes, and this is for the state of California now, um, then you're going to have a benefit corp. Actually, I want to just say that this doesn't have to be for California. Any, any state that offers the benefit corp and not all states offer, they are like, 32 states that offer benefit corp, this would be your answer for this question. If the answer is no, this one is basically only offered in California, at least um, that I know of. I've never seen it offered anywhere else. Then you want to have a sole purpose corporation. So again, if your investors want to do things with the company beyond just maximizing the profits of the company, then you're going to start a benefit corp. Um, if your answer is no, that that's all they want to do is just maximize the property. They're just profits. They just want to make money. Then um, they want to make money. Of course, these are all for social enterprises. So, of course, helping the community as well. Um, then you're going to do a so, uh, social purpose corporation. And this is in the state of California. Right. If your answer to that question is no. And again, um, is your the question, the initial question was, is the entity located in California? If the answer is no, then you'd want to do a benefit corp. Because like I said, California is not the only state that has benefit corps. It's like in 32 states. Um, or you would want to do a 
sole purpose um, corporation, again, I've only seen that in California. Or if you're in Delaware, then you want to do a Delaware Public Benefit Corporation. So that is the kind of questionnaire that you want to go through mentally. Um, like I said, I will link um, the infographic in the description below so you can actually visualize it and you can go through it again um, listening to it because I know me just verbalizing it may sound a little confusing, but just listen to the questions, write them down, you know, answer them along the way and you'll do just fine um, that way. But if you do definitely want to go through this and take some time with it, I will link the again, the infographic at the in the description so that you can take it and you can go through it and take your time and decide which type of entity is best for you to choose as a social enterprise or as a social entrepreneur. Um, again, this is the first step to having a successful social, social enterprise is figuring out first before you jump into anything which type of entity is going to be best for what you want to do beyond just helping the community. Because at the end of the day, all of these are businesses. Even when you're helping the community, you're still running a business and businesses need to make money. You need to decide how you want that business to make money. Is it through a hybrid? Is it through a um, L3C, LLC, corporation, S Corp? You need to be able to figure that out. And this infographic does a really good job at helping you with that. So again, I will link it in the description be below. If you wanna get in contact with me to work with me to help you to create a profitable um, social enterprise, um, to start it or to grow it, that information will also be in the description below. All right, thank you guys for joining me today. Bye-bye. Are you an entrepreneur? nonprofit, social entrepreneur, or small business? Are you driven and motivated by your desires for success? Then don't waste any time. Take action now. TBA Consulting develops high quality business plans that you can use as a blueprint for success. Help you stand out from your competitors. Help you generate revenue. And are worthy of being funded by banks. SBA, investor, and venture capitalist. Follow your dreams and build a business that is profitable and sustainable. Start your business plan with TBA Consulting today.